right, everybody. We are ready for game one of the 1982 NLCS based on the standings of the teams through the NBC Stratomatic Game of the Week all through 1982. It has come down to our final four, the Milwaukee Brewers in the American League. We take on the Kansas City Royals. And game one of that series will be the next video after this one on a different day. Uh, this is the National League Championship Series where the Dodgers and the Expos both clinched pretty early. So they were able to set their pitching lineups and, and, and rotations and everything to the way they like it with plenty of rest. So looking at uh, game one, we're looking at the pitching matchup of Fernando Valenzuela against Steve Rogers. So I'll get everything set up and we'll be ready for first pitch. Uh, of game one, but before the first pitch starts, once I get everything set up, I will go through the complete rosters for both teams. As I had to pick the 25 man roster, I had to pick my own lineups because, it, again, this is not an as played. So I took the, the 25 guys I thought best suited each team for this best of five series. First two are in Montreal, last three, if necessary, are in Los Angeles. So let me Clear everything out, get everything set up, and we'll be ready for Game 1 of the National League Championship Series 1982 style. And we'll be ready for that in just a moment. Okay, we're back and ready to go. First, let's look at the Dodgers lineup. Their 25-man uh, roster consists of 15 position players and 10 pitchers. So let's look at their bench. Uh, they're going to have a total of 7 bench players because the 8 position players in the lineup and then the seven on the bench so off the bench they have two lefties they have George Orta and Rick Monday they have a switch two switch hitters Ron Renicki and Daryl Thomas and they have three right handers Mark Belanger Steve Yeager and Mike Marshall so those are the bench players for the Dodgers that are available for the championship series Look at their bullpen. They have 10 pitchers. They have the starting pitcher, Fernando Valenzuela. And then we have three more starting pitchers for games two, three, and four. Not necessarily in this order. Bob Welch, Jerry Royce, and Burt Hooten. So that's the four starters that are going to be used in the championship series. Let's look at their six relief pitchers. We have two lefties, Terry Forster, Steve Howe. And we have four righties, Dave Stewart, Joe Beckwith, Alejandro Pena, and Tom Niedenfjord. So that's the complete roster, 25-man roster for the Dodgers that they will be carrying in this National League Championship Series. I'm not going to do injuries, so I'm not going to have to worry about swapping anybody out. That, that's just, we're just going to go with the rosters as they are. All right, now the bench and bullpen for the Expos. They're going a little bit different. They're going to do 16 position players and nine pitchers. And that's just based on the cards I have and, and whatnot. So out of their nine, I'm sorry, out of their uh, eight bench players, they have three lefties. They have Terry Francona, Brad Mills, and Mike Gates. Three switch hitters, Jerry White, Tim Blackwell and Brian Little, and two right-handers, Dan Norman and Joel Youngblood. So those are the eight position players that are on the bench for game one and will be on the roster throughout the five-game series. Look at their other, four, other three starting pitchers for games two, three, and four. Charlie Lee, Bill Gullickson, and Scott Sanderson. Again, not necessarily in that order. That's just who they have which leaves a total of five bullpen pitchers, two lefties, Dan Schottsader and Woody Fryman, three righties, Bryn Smith, <coughs> sorry, Ray Burris, and the closer, Jeff Reardon. All right, so that's who they have on their bench and their bullpen. Now it's time to look at the starting lineups for both teams. First, for the visiting San, uh, Los Angeles Dodgers, Leading off at second base will be Steve Sachs. Batting second at shortstop is Bill Russell. Hitting third, playing left, I'm sorry, playing right field is Pedro Guerrero. 
Batting cleanup at third base, the Penguin Ron Say. Hitting fifth at first base, Steve Garvey. Batting sixth in left field, Dusty Baker. Batting seventh in center field, Ken Landro. Batting eighth, catcher Mike Sosha. And batting ninth, using pitch rating card number two, Fernando Valenzuela. So those that's the starting lineup for the Los Angeles Dodgers. That'll be facing Steve Rogers. Now we'll look at the starting lineup for the homestanding Montreal Expos. Leading off in left field, Tim Raines. Batting second and first base, Al Oliver. Hitting third and playing center field is the Hawk, Andre Dawson. Batting cleanup and catching, Gary Carter. Hitting fifth at third base, Tim Wallach. Hitting sixth, the Crow, Warren Cromarty. He's in right field. Chris Beyer, the shortstop, bats seventh. Doug Flynn, second baseman, hits eighth. And using pitcher in card number one is Steve Rogers. So there are your bench, bullpen, and starting lineups for both teams. So as we get into the series, you know who's available and who is not. So if you didn't see a player there and you thought they might possibly should have been in the playoff roster, well, they didn't make the cut. So some of the guys for the Dodgers that didn't make the cut were Ricky Wright, and Vincente Romo. So they didn't make the cut for the Dodgers. And for the Expos, very few. Uh, they didn't, didn't make the cut. I guess most noticeably David Palmer did not make the cut. Neither did uh, John Milner, who uh, actually he, he went to Pittsburgh, so he's not even there anyway. Frank Tavares and Wallace Johnson. So none of those guys made the cut to be on the playoff roster. But you got to cap it at 25, so I took the 25 that I thought were the most viable. Let's bring the score sheet in to play. And again, these are the lineups I had to create myself because there's no as played. Because this series never happened in real life. So for all the what if fans out there, you can have a ball with that, I suppose. Steve Rogers. Finishing up the warm-up tosses. Ballpark effects for exhibitions, not exhibition stadium, for Olympic Stadium in Montreal. Singles, lefties are 1 to 11, righties are 1 to 4. Home runs, 1 to 6 for both. Got the dice. I've got the dice for the Dodgers. The blue, red for the Expos. And of course, they're both blue, so blue kind of goes for both, but then the red is for the Expos. All right. Steve Sachs stepping in and let me check my setup and make sure everything is looks like it's all viewable from what I can see on my phone so I think we're okay on this I think we're good to go come down just a little bit lower maybe get closer to the cards perhaps maybe that's the best way to do it right there okay that's what we'll go with hopefully nothing else happens to it not blurry or anything. I think we're okay on that. Okay, Steve Rogers has finished, finished up his warm-up tosses. And after the whole season of the NBC Game of the Week on every Saturday, we are now into the playoffs. So I'm going to start posting these during the week. This one is, I'm being recorded on a Tuesday night. I'm going to post it on a Wednesday afternoon. And then uh, the Game 1 of the ALCS, I'll probably record tomorrow night and post it on Thursday and just try to do an alternating and then once in a while sprinkle in a Washington Nationals game as well to finish up their season replay. All right, Steve Rogers facing Steve Sachs. So we've got a battle of Steves right off the bat here. The only thing we're missing now is Steve Tower. All right, so here we go. Steve Sachs facing Steve Rogers and game one of the NLCS is underway. Got a 5-5 against a right-hander, struck him out. So good start for Steve Rogers as he puts the K on Sacks. One away, and that's going to bring up Bill Russell. Thought about dropping him in the order, but the Dodgers, for the most part, batted, you know, hit him a lot of times, hit him second, um, depending on what's going on. But I could have, I thought about putting Landro second and Russell down here, but I don't know. It's, Felt like putting Russell in, uh, second to start this one. Maybe in game two, I'll flip-flop him. I don't know. We shall see. Rodgers to Russell, 1-6. That's a, a one-out walk, so 
Russell gets aboard on the one-out walk. Hold rating zero for Rogers, and Carter's a minus three, so it's a minus three. If he gets a jump, it'd be a total of 14 because you lose two for being held and then the minus three from Carter. So he would need a four, and even if he got the four, it'd be a 14. So I guess they'll go ahead and roll it just to see. They don't, it's a three, so they don't get the jump, so no worries there. Russell will be held, but he can't go anywhere. And that'll bring up the slugging Pedro Guerrero. See what he can do against Steve Rogers. Infield double play depth. 210, and that's a ballpark single check. Right-handers is only one to four. That's a five. So you would have thought, or I would have thought, that Olympic Stadium was symmetrical and everything should be the same, but for whatever reason, Strat rates them 11 and four. That's, you know, difference for lefty and righty. So since he's a righty, that's a five, it misses. So it's gonna be a line out to short rather than a base hit. So Guerrero is out of there, two down for the Penguin, Ron Say. Roll the Havoc on Rogers, looking for a pickoff. No, nope, nothing happening. Or looking for a balk or pass, or a wild pitch rather, not a pickoff. Here's Ron Say, the Penguin. 2-8 for Say. Ground ball back to the pitcher, and Rogers will throw to first. And it's an easy 1-2-3 in. Well, not a 1-2-3 inning. It was a walk mixed in there, but still an easy inning for Steve Rogers. And the Dodgers go quietly in the first. After one half of an inning, in game one of the NLCS, it is the Dodgers nothing and the Expos coming to bat with Fernando Valenzuela on the mound. One year removed from Fernando Mania. He's going to face future Hall of Famer Tim Raines. 4-11. Raines is a switch hitter batting right-handed. 4-11 is a ballpark single. Again, one to four, but that's a three. So that time Reigns gets a break and he gets the base hit off the ballpark card. So Tim Reigns will be definitely looking to get a jump on Super Advanced. He's a two through six or an 11 to get a jump. And for the Dodgers, minus two because you had a minus one from Sosha and a minus one from Valenzuela. Total of minus four. So he gets a jump, it's a one to 15. An 11, which equals the jump. He gets the jump he needs, so it's a 1 to 15 to steal it for Tim Raines. And he's in there, stolen base for Tim Raines. So he does what the Expos want him to do get on base and steal a base. General calls General Havoc on the base pass. He will have to be held at second base. Fernando now with the Havoc roll to Al Oliver. Nothing happening. Fernando to Al Oliver. 3-5 against a left-hander. That's a single two stars for Al Oliver. And just like that, the Expos are on the board. one nothing. Tell you what, the Strat computer really loved the Dodgers. They just blew everybody away. But when I played them cards and dice a few times in April and May, they never won. They kept losing. So this, this could be a situation where the Expos run away with this. I don't know. Um, we'll to see what kind of fight the Dodgers have in them. Now Oliver will not be held at first base. Have it roll for Fernando. Nothing happening. Here's the Hawk, Andre Dawson. 3-5 against a left-hander. That's trouble. 1-2 to two is a triple. 3-20 to 20 is a single. That's a 7. It's a single, two stars. And the Expos are still rolling. Runners at the corners. Nobody out. A run already in. Dawson can get a jump on the following numbers, 2 through 5, 11, or a 12. So let's see if he can get a jump. That's an 11 again, so he does get the jump. And let's see, the 19 being held as a 17, minus 2 combined on the battery, makes him a 15. So 1 to 15 again, and Oliver, of course, will hold at third base as the throw goes down. So 1 to 15. And he's got caught stealing. How about that? This time, Sosha threw a laser down there. And Steve Sachs put on the tag for out number two. I'm sorry, out number one, rather. So Dawson is erased. Oliver is still at third with one out. And they're going to bring the infield in. They don't think they can score many runs against Rodgers. So here's Gary Carter. Nothing on the Havoc roll. Fernando to Carter. 
That's a two six, and that's a single. There is a there is a um, an omega there for clutch, but they're not two outs. There's only one out, so that single is going to stand. And the Expos take a two nothing lead here in the first against Fernando. So there was something in the air that night. The stars were bright, but not Fernando, as he is getting rocked. And now Carter will not be held at first base. Wallach the batter. Havoc for Fernando. Nothing happening. 5-6 against a righty. Ground ball shortstop A. That'll be a double play. 6-4-3. But that came one batter too late as far as Valenzuela is concerned. Expos pick up two in the first. And at the end of one, it's 2 nothing. Expos. They have given Steve Rogers a lead to protect. And it's going to be another battle of Steve's, like it was to start the game. Now we got Steve against Steve again for Steve Garvey. 5-8. And that is a ground ball second base X. And the second baseman in this case is Doug Flynn. And for Flynn, he's a 2-E-15. 2 and a 12, he'll get to it. E15 and a 12. E15, I'm sorry. E, yeah, E15 and a 12. There's a 14 and 17, but no 12. So it's a good play for Doug Flynn. As he is in like Flynn with that defensive play. One away. Rings up. Oops. Pulled him too fast there. Dusty Baker. So Dusty, but you know what I'm going to do is one at a time. It's probably easier. Dusty Baker, the batter, against Rodgers. 1-7. That's a walk. So a one-out walk to Rodgers, just like the first inning started. This one starts with a one-out walk. Baker, 2 through 6, an 11 or a 12 to get a jump. That's an 8. Cannot get the jump, so he will have to hold. And, of course, they will hold him on, but he can't go anywhere. Now, Landro steps to the plate. 5-9, lefty batting. 5-9, ground ball, second base A. It's a 4-6-3 double play. And that's going to make for a quick exit here in the second inning of the Dodgers. As that clears all the base runners and clears the inning, we go to the bottom of the second. Still 2 nothing Spose. And the Crow, Warren Camardi, will lead things off for the Expos. 4-4, four, four, lefty on lefty. 4-4 four, four is a fly ball center field X center fielder. Landro is a 4-E-6. Four, 4-1, four that's going to drop probably for a triple. Let's see. Might be a double, but I think it might be a triple. 4-1 four and a one is a triple. That's a, an 11, and he's an E-6. There is no 11, but it is going to be a leadoff triple for Warren Camardi. As Landro, unable to get it, splits the gap, goes to the wall, and it rolls for a triple on that AstroTurf. And now the Dodgers again bring the infield in as Chris Spires, the batter. Fernando, rough start. Trying to shake it off. 2-4. It's ground ball third base B, and that may... Eliminate the lead runner. Let's take a look as we look at the super advanced base running chart on ground balls with the infield in and a runner at third. Ground ball B says a seven because that was a ground ball B. A two four was a ground ball B. Ground ball B a seven. So we come here to seven. Batter safe. Lead runner is out. So he is out of there. Ron safe. Throws home and they get Cromarty 5 to 2 as Sosha puts on the tag. Spire takes first base on the fielder's choice. He will not be held. So that one, I, I don't see anything on there that says you can hold the runner. I mean, I'm going by what's on the rule book. So that's one of those ones you might want to probably would have rather held the runner, but they say you throw through so, and you send him, so you send him. All right, so nothing going on. Here's Doug Flynn, runner at first and one away. Fernando, 5'10", 
Ground ball shortstop X. Spire was not being held, so there's nobody to worry about covering anything. Ground ball shortstop X. Russell's a 4E34. 4 and 18 is still going to be, I believe, a G1. 4 and an 18 is still a G1, so possible double play. That's an 8, and he is an E34. And there is no 8, so it is going to be a double play. 6 4 3 to end the inning. So what looked promising for the Expos quickly turns away as nice play by Say to cut the runner down at the plate. And then a double play ball gets him out of the jam. We go to the third, still 2 nothing Expos. Rogers back out will face Sosha. Oops. Sosha, Fernando, and then Sachs. So Sosha will lead things off against Steve Rogers. 3-7, and that's a fly to center. One away. And that will send up Fernando using pitch rating card number two. That's a 2-4, and that's going to be a single for Fernando. First hit of the game for the Dodgers. It comes from the pitcher Fernando. How about that? Fernando Valenzuela. Of course, he will not be held at first. And Steve Sachs, the batter. Sachs struck out his first chance. The only strikeout of the game came on the first batter. So now we need the Havoc roll for Rodgers. Nothing happening. 2-8. And that's a 1-6 home run, but that's an 18, which turns into a fly ball to left field. Sachs just missed it. Two down. That could have tied the game right there on that one swing, but just couldn't quite get enough of it. And Bill Russell, the venerable one, is up. Havoc roll for Rodgers. Nothing happening. We get a 6-5, and that's a 1-3 home run chance, but that's a 19, so that's another fly ball to left. He had weak power anyway, so it wouldn't have been a home run, but instead it's a fly to left. And after the Fernando single, nothing else happens. We go to the bottom of the third. Still two to zip. Favor the Expos. Fernando back out. His fatigue is an eight, as is Steve Rogers. They both have excellent fatigue ratings, so they'll go as long as they're effective, or if they need to be pinch hit for late in the game. Here is Steve Rogers. Four eight. He's a right-handed hitter off of Fernando. One's a triple. Look at that. That's a triple for Steve Rogers. Are you kidding me? A one there. That's a triple. That's the danger of the 50-50 because I don't think Steve Rogers has a triple inning, but he just did. He just got one right there. It went to the gap, got on the AstroTurf, and Rogers put on the afterburners. And whether you think it's realistic or not, he got a triple. So there you go. Fernando in a tight spot again. Tommy Lasorda choking on his linguini. He does order the infield in, though, against Tim Raines. Even though there's nobody out, they're still going to play the infield in because they're down two runs already. Fernando needs a strikeout big time. 4-11. That's a ballpark single check, and that's a 5, but Raines switch it everybody right-handed. That's only a 4. So instead, it's a line out to short, and that saves the bacon of the Dodgers for at least one at bat. One down, runner had to hold, and here is Al Oliver. Nothing on the Havoc. Again, infield still in. 1-8, and that's a single to left by Al Oliver. He's two for two. That's an RBI single, and the Expos lead it three to nothing. They take a three-nothing lead. Oliver will not be held. He's certainly not going to try to go anywhere. And the Hawk, Andre Dawson, is up. Dodgers may be looking to get the bullpen going early as Fernando looks shaky. Here's Dawson. 2-6 for Dawson. That's a 1-2 single, but that's a 8, so that's a 3 through 20. 8 falls in that category. It's a line out to third, snagged by Say. 2 down for Gary Carter. So Fernando trying to pitch his way out of any further trouble. He's already in trouble, but trying to get out of further trouble. To Gary Carter, 4-8, and that's bad news again. One's a triple, four, the two through 20 is a single, that's a four. So that's a single, two stars. That'll move Oliver to third. 
Carter will not be held at first. Runners at the corners, two down, one already in, three nothing Expos. Dodgers on the brink here of getting blown out. Fernando's got to bear down. That's a two chance for a balk or a pass ball. He has no balk rating. Sosha has a six for a pass ball, so it could be a pass ball. But we're checking for balk, so there's no balk, so we move on. Three eight. And that's a straight up home run for Tim Wallach, a three run shot. And Fernando has just left the building, I do believe. That's going to be it for Fernando. He just did not have it today. And it all culminated right here with a three run shot. It is now six to nothing. Expos. And that's going to be it for Fernando. He will leave. And Tommy Lasorda looks very much dejected after that. So Dodgers will go to the bullpen and already they're in kind of a mop-up role to begin with. So let's see how they want to play this. Do you use... I guess they're going to use a long reliever, Dave Stewart, who was a part-time starter as well. So Dave Stewart is on for the Dodgers. Fernando, an outing he would like to forget. He's going to go two and two-thirds innings. He's going to give up six runs. They all happen to be earned. And the one big long ball there from Wallach was the death knell for him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hits in just two and two-thirds innings. He didn't strike anybody out. He didn't walk anybody, but he didn't strike anybody out either. So... Unusual line there for Fernando, for sure. Stewart now on to face Cromarty. Followed by Spire, if Cromarty reaches. Stewart, 3-7. And that is a 1-17 single. That's a 1. It's a base hit. Cromarty is on. He will not be held. And Chris Spire, the batter. Have it for Chris Stewart, for Dave Stewart rather, nothing happening. 1-6 for, for Spire. That's a 1-3 home run. 4-20 is a double. That's an 11. That's going to be a double for Spire. Cromartie not being held. He runs at a 13. He wasn't held, makes him a 14. There are two outs, makes him a 16. The double went is assumed to go to center field. And the center fielder arm of Landro is zero. So we have the 13, four, it's up one through 16 to score him. And they're gonna try to get him and if it means Spire goes to third, he goes to third, but they gotta cut that run off. One to 16. And he's in there and that's gonna put Spire to third on the throw since they decided not to cut it, but they couldn't afford to cut it. And now, need the old correction tape, it is now seven to nothing. Seven to nothing, Expos. That run is charged to Mr. Stewart. Spires at third with two down. Now the ninth man to bat in the inning is Doug Flynn. You could walk him and pitch to uh, Rogers if you, they like, but they're going to go ahead and pitch to, to Flynn, thinking he's not much of a hitter, which he isn't. But you're off Stewart's card. Six seven is a strikeout, though, so. Gets out of the inning there with the strikeout. But five runs score and a profitable third inning for the Expos. They now lead it seven to nothing as we go to the fourth. And my hopes for a close game seem to have gone by the wayside. Again, the Dodgers definitely overperformed on the computer. They underperformed for me when I played with them cards and dice. So maybe this is uh, just... Their come up, come up and back at them. Here's Guerrero. 5 9, and that's a ground ball to third. Tim Wallach right there, one away. Brings up the Penguin, Ron Say. 2 5, and that's a walk. So again, another one out walk. In three of the four innings, they've had one out walks. Of course, not going to go anywhere, not going to be held, not with the score being what it is. Here's Garvey. Havoc roll, nothing happening. 
25, and that's a 1 to 16 single, but that's a 19. That's the way it's been for the Dodgers. It's a line out to short, out number two. So even when the D20's odds are in their favor, the D20 doesn't cooperate. Here's Dusty Baker. Nothing on the habit. 6 8, and that's a 1 to 6 single. That's a 4, so that one did work out, but it's only one star. And that's going to put runners at first and second with two outs for Ken Landro. Rogers, nothing happening. Here's Landro. 2 8, ground ball to second. Flynn is there, and the inning's over. So despite the walk and the hit, Dodgers get nothing. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Still exposing command seven to nothing. Stewart back out for his second inning of work. We'll start out facing Steve Rogers, who incredibly tripled off of Fernando's card in his first at bat. Let's see what he can do here against Stewart. Six six. He's going to fly to center. One away. So one down, and that brings up Tim Raines. 6-7. This time Raines switches around to bat left. 6-7. That's a strikeout. So Stewart. Two quick outs here to start the fourth. And here is Al Oliver. 6-4. Lefty. Ground ball third base X. Ron Say. He's a 4 E18. 4 and 16. He'll get to that. E18. And he's a 13. Check E18 on a 13. Nope, there's 11, 15, 16, and 17, but no 13. So it's good play for Ron Say. And the Expos go 1, 2, 3 here in the fourth. First time that's happened. And we go to the fifth. It is still 7 to nothing. Stewart is scheduled to bat second this inning. So they will pull him for a pinch hitter. And the pinch hitter they're going to use is George Orta. So we have Sosha followed by Orta and then Sachs. So Sosha and then we're going to have Orta, pinch hitter. First things first, it is Sosha. 6-9 and that's a strikeout. One away. Now the pinch hitter George Orta. Tough year, 217 and 115 at bats with two home runs. Exclusively used against right handers, just about. You can see they have 1% lefties and 99% right handers. Does have a good column three if you can find it. Didn't find it. In fact, it found Rogers' card, 5 7. 1 to 4 is a triple, but that's a no no. That's a 17, so that's just a fly to right. Two down, and that's it for Orta. And Joe Beckwith will be coming in for the Dodgers the pitch in the fifth inning. Right now it is the top of the order in Steve Sachs with two outs and the base is clear. That's a 2-11 and that's a ballpark single check. That's a 5 but again right hander is 1-4 to four. so once again the D20 cost him and the inning is over. So Stewart's going to go an inning and a third. He's going to give up three hits and a run. Actually, three hits and two runs. No, one run. Let's see here. Actually, Fernando only gave up five, not six. My bad. He gave up five runs. Stewart gave up two runs. Did get two strikeouts. No walks. Now Joe Beckwith is coming on in what amounts to a mop-up duty. Kind of rough to say in the fifth inning that you're mopping up, but that's the situation they find themselves. So we go over to Joe Beckwith. He was two and one with a 2.70 ERA, one start and one save. He does have a long relief rating, so he can pitch at least two innings if he's if he's uh, effective until it's time to pinch hit for him. So here's the Hawk, Andre Dawson. Against Beckwith, 312. That's a low max, but nobody else is on base, so Say won't do anything but keep it to himself. One down for Gary Carter. 
112, that's another low max. Look at that, back-to-back -back low maxes. How times has that ever happened to somebody? Back-to-back -back low maxes. Of course, nobody was on base either time. Here's a wallet. 4-6 for Beckwith, fly to center. So a very easy inning for Joe Beckwith. We go to the sixth. Still 7-0, Expos. Rogers back out, large and in charge. Facing Bill Russell. Trying to get something started. 1-6, that's a walk. So a leadoff walk this time. He's walked twice in this game. And with the score being what it is, he's not going to go anywhere and they're not going to hold him. So here's Pedro Guerrero. Havoc roll, nothing happening. Guerrero. 4-9. That's a ground ball shortstop X. Shortstop is Spire. He's a 3-E-14. 3 and a 6. Let's take a look. Probably a fielder's choice of some kind. Three and a six is a, actually it's runner advance. That's an eight. And he is, he is an E14 on an eight. There is no eight, but it is runner advance. So the ground ball to short with the runner advancing to second base. So Guerrero is out. Russell takes second base. And it brings up the penguin, Ron Say. Dodgers already look, thinking about game two already and not wanting to fall behind two games to none. So the sort of will be planning some sort of strategy. 210 for Say. It's a ground ball shortstop A. So ground out to short, runner holding. I'll bring up Steve Garvey with two outs and a runner on second. Rogers, nothing happening. 4-6 against Rogers, another ground ball shortstop A, and that's going to end the inning. So Spire, a busy man over there, three consecutive ground outs, and he takes care of the Dodgers all by himself almost. So six shutout frames for Steve Rogers, and he is large and in charge. And Joe Beckwith back out. For his second inning of work, he retired all three he faced the first time out. Here's Cromartie. 4-8 against the lefty. That's a ground ball to second, and Steve Sachs is there. One down, and that's going to send up Chris Spire. Short stop. 6-10, and that's a fly ball center field X. That's Landro. He is a 4-E6. 4-19, he'll get to that, but the D6s are ominous with that total of 17. He's an E6. Yep, he got lucky. 15 and 18 were errors, but not a 17. So Landro does make the play. Tough play, but he made it. Two down for Doug Flynn. 6-4. That's a fly ball to right in the inning. So Beckwith pitches two innings of shutout relief. He will be lifted for a pinch hitter coming up, but he faced two batters and didn't allow anything. No walks, no strikeouts. So we go to the seventh with the score. Still seven nothing Expos. It'll be Baker, Landro, and Sosha. So might not get to Beckwith. Maybe Beckwith will pitch a third inning. We'll see. Right now is Dusty Baker. Four four. That's a ballpark single check, but a 19 is too high for that. Line out to short. One down for Kenny Landro. Landro is up. 4-7. That's a strikeout. So two down as Landro is retired. That brings up Sosha. 1-5. And he flies to right. Two, uh, the inning's over, rather. So we might bring Beckwith. I think we're going to bring, bring Beckwith back. I think it was premature about pinch hitting for him because... He will be leading off next inning, so that will take care of that. All right, so we go to the seventh inning stretch, and Beckwith is going to stay in there to face the pitcher, Steve Rogers, to start things off. Here in the bottom of the seventh with the Expos comfortably in front, seven to nothing. 
Looks like everything is still copacetic on the video. Am I running out of room here a little bit on the score sheet? So let's move this over just a touch to allow more room for the score sheet. Oops. Okay, I think that'll help now. Get the dice tray in there and all that good stuff. All right. Back with. Thought he was done, but the sort of said, "Get back out there, young man." And Pitch this inning as well. Save our bullpen. Back with the Rodgers. 3-8. That's a strikeout. One away. And that flips the order to Tim Raines. Left fielder. Back with the Raines. 1-7. That's a fly to center. So back with one out away from retiring all nine he faces. Here's Al Oliver. 1-7. Well, that, that broke it up. That was a single, so that broke everything up. Base hit for Al Oliver. He will not be held. Definitely won't go anywhere. And here's the Hawk, Andre Dawson. Uh, no balk chances or wild pitch chances for Beckwith. Sosha does have pass ball chances, though, so we do need to roll the habit. Don't. And nothing happens. Here's Dawson. 5-9, and that's a strikeout. So, boy, Beckwith really something else. He goes three innings, not just the two. Does give up a hit. A little messy there. He does give up a hit in those three innings. And he did record two strikeouts now. All right, now we can close the book on Beckwith. As we go to the eighth, it is still 7 nothing. Expos. Now the question is how long do they want Steve Rogers to go? Let's see. They're going to let him start the eighth inning. Although the bullpen is active. And now we have a pinch hitter for Beckwith coming up. And that's Rick Monday. Center fielder. Or right fielder. Or any outfielder really. 257. 11 home runs. It's not looking like it's going to be Blue Monday like it was in 81. But uh, they're still hoping to get something started with Rick Monday, start the eighth against Rogers. One nine, and he struck him out, so that didn't help Rick Monday at all. One down, and flip the order over to Steve Sachs. Five eight against Rogers, that's a ground ball, second base X. Flynn is a two E15. Two and an eight, he'll get to that. E15 and 11. See if that's good. E15 and an 11. It is good. So no problems there for Mr. Flynn. Two down. And we're going to pinch hitter for Bill Russell. He will be pinch hit for, although he did has walked twice. They want somebody with a little more stick. So they're going to bring in Daryl Thomas to pinch hit. Thomas hit 265, so he's a little bit better average than Russell. Of course, his defense is a lot is a little bit worse. He's a 4E88, but they're not worried about that at this point. So Daryl Thomas will take over as he pinch hits here against Steve Rogers. 4-6, switch it to being left, and that is a fly to our left field. And that's going to end up inning the inning. So Rodgers goes eight shutout frames, and they may go ahead and let him try to finish the, the deal, finish what he started, because he would get time to rest. Uh, even on a game five situation, he'd be okay. So now we need a pitcher for the Dodgers, as Beckwith was done, but certainly he saved a lot of their uh, bullpen from overwork. And now, let's see, they have Carter, Wallach, and Cromartie. They will go to Alejandro Pena out of the bullpen. 0-2, 479 ERA. So Alejandro Pena, they're saving their lefty relievers. No use using them. They want them both fresh for game two. So they can come in when it's needed for a lefty. Right now, when it's 7-0, it really doesn't matter. Lefty-righty, they're just going to 
try to get the game over with and move on to game two. Painted to Carter, 4-9, and that's ground ball to short. And the new shortstop, Daryl Thomas. I'll tell you what, you put a new guy in, it, in the defense position, the ball always finds you, and it just found him there. But fortunately for him, it was not an X chance. So he makes the play. Does Thomas, one away for Tim Wallach. 2-7, and that's a fly to center, so two down. And one good thing about the Dodgers being the road team, they only have to cover eight innings of pitching when you're losing, so they don't have to use anybody to pitch a ninth inning. That saves a little bit more of their bullpen. Here's Cormarty. 1-9, and that's a ground ball back to Pena. So it's a 1-2-3 inning for Alejandro Pena. So the Dodger bullpen of Beckwith and Pena throw four shutout innings in relief, but damage was done here in the third. That kind of put the game on ice. So now we go to the top of the ninth. Rogers has nothing against his fatigue because he didn't give up anything in the eighth, so they're going to leave him out there. They do have activity in the bullpen just in case it is needed. They do have... Let's see who they got down there. They do have right-hander Bryn Smith. Just loosening just in case. But they're thinking that Steve Rogers can finish the deal. We shall see. Rogers facing the heart of the order. Guerrero, Say, and Garvey. 1-9. And that's a... Oh, he just missed a... Some big hits here, but a 1-9 is a ground ball to second. Kind of nice spin for the Dodgers. Guerrero is out. Brings up Ron Say. 5-5, five, five, and that's a strikeout. So Steve Rogers, one out away from a complete game shutout of in game one of the NLCS. Here's Steve Garvey. 3-7, and that's a strikeout. It's an appropriate way to end it for Steve Rogers and the Expos. They wrap it up and beat the Dodgers in game one. Beat them soundly, and they beat their ace, Fernando. They win it 7 to nothing here in game one. Take a one-game-to-none lead in the best of five. And let's look at the totals for each team. Star of the game, obviously, Steve Rogers. No doubt about it. His complete game shutout. Let's get his totals. Of course, he goes nine innings. He has no runs. Let's check his hits allowed. One, two. So I've got him with a two-hit shutout. The only hits were one by Fernando and one by Baker. That's it. So a two-hit shutout from Steve Rogers. He did walk four. One, two, three, four. So he did walk four. Strikeouts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so final line score that I have on Steve Rogers. Nine innings pitch, two hits, no runs, four walks, six strikeouts. He obviously gets the win. Fernando takes the loss. Get the totals for the Dodgers. No runs, two hits, and no errors. For the Expos, seven runs, and they do it on 13 hits and no errors. So there is your final line score. Expos win game one, seven to nothing over the Dodgers. Seven runs, 13 hits, no errors for the Expos. No runs, two hits, no errors for the Dodgers. Steve Rogers, the winner. Fernando Valens, way the, the loser. As we look ahead to game two in the NLCS, the starting pitchers for both teams in game two. For the Expos, they will go with Charlie Lee, 12 and 10 with a 3-2-4 ERA. And the Dodgers will counter with Ebony Eyes Bob Welch, 16 and 11 with a 3-3-6 ERA. So Lee versus Welch in game two. With the Expos leading one game to none. So that's going to do it here from Exhibition Stadium. Now, I keep wanting to call it Exhibition Stadium. It's Olympic Stadium, my bad. From Olympic Stadium, Expos win it 7 0. Game one of the ALCS will be posted the next night from this one. So this is going to post on Wednesday 
I believe Wednesday is the 13th of October and so the ALCS will post should post on the 14th of October and then sometime during the weekend we'll be probably on Saturday and Sunday I'll post a game each of game two the game twos of these series so that's good deal from here uh, Expos get up, get through the Dodgers and Fernando early and kind of take the drama out of the game but what are you gonna do you tip your cap to Steve Rogers for his shutout relief work and the big blow in the game Tim Wallach's three run homer that kind of sealed the deal even though those two runs in the first were enough to win I think the, the three run homer here kind of just took the starch out of the Dodgers and that kind of just sealed their fate so to speak so that's good from here hope you enjoyed this Stratomatic presentation game one of the 1982 NLCS based on the standings based on the game of the week as I played through the season on Stratomatic so that's what the Stratomatic computer picked out as the two division winners so it's not Atlanta and St. Louis like real life it is the Expos and the Dodgers so until next time enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play however you choose to play it and I will see you all down the road